This is it, the difficult second album. So in 2003, Rolls-Royce released the Phantom, its first car under BMW ownership. And it was a huge success. And it was one of those cars that just elevated the brand, the company, and everything it did into the true stratosphere of cool. But they had to follow it up. And this is it. Now the design on this car, it's not hugely different until you take a really close look at the car. So obviously around the front, it's been softened and rounded and some of the details that were beginning to look a bit old have been deleted. But broadly speaking, it follows most of the Rolls-Royce tenets of this sort of car. So the wheels, for example, are roughly half the size of the flanks. But in areas like this section, it's just been tweaked and pulled, so it looks a lot more rakish and a lot more sporty. The old one had a slightly awkward arse, but this one's just been tightened, pulled together, and now it looks, well, not sporty, but certainly a bit more thrusting. So the outside's not hugely different. It's evolution, not revolution. But to be honest, with this kind of car, it's the inside that really, really matters. That's where all the fun stuff happens. Inside is as nice and beautiful as you would want a £300,000 car to be, which is what it will cost, more, more or less. Everything is just finished to such a high standard. I mean, air vents that are solid metal, there's no trim here, there's no sorcery. It's, it's, it's just, it is what it is. It looks like wood, it is wood. It looks like aluminium, it is aluminium. Talking of aluminium, the whole car has been made out of aluminium. And for reasons unbeknownst to Rolls-Royce, apparently, that has improved the acoustics of the vehicle no end, and it's actually quieter than the outgoing car, which wasn't, which wasn't a loud thing. Obviously there's a screen that's next to the steering wheel which does all your sat-nav stuff, but that drops down and reveals this gallery section, which is what it says on the tin. It's, it's, it's proper Ron Seal stuff. It allows you to fit your own art inside the car. That's quite clever for a couple of reasons. Number one, is that, obviously, you get to have your arts on the move. Number two, it removes the ceiling of the price of the car. So if you had a bit of Warhol in here, or Damien Hirst, or a Banksy, then your car would be literally priceless. And you'd be able to enjoy it from the back seat on your way to Tesco's. The other thing you'll notice about this car is the clock. Now, on a lot of luxury vehicles, you'll get a collaboration between a really, really posh watch company and the car maker. But Rolls-Royce have specifically said they don't want anyone else involved because they truly believe they can do a better job. So if you don't want a rectangle of Matisse to look at when you're driving down the road, you can just contemplate one of their fine timepieces. The thing with most luxury cars is, is that the brands themselves have to tell their customers what luxury is. For Rolls-Royce, it's a slightly different relationship. Because there are broadly a thousand cars sold a year, the CEO can literally go and take them to dinner and say, what do you want? What do you like? What do you dislike? And one of the things they found was the way the seats are configured. Now, in this new Phantom, they've been designed to tilt in. So it's a more sociable, communal rear seat. So without having to go to all the effort of getting up and turning your shoulder to have a conversation with the person that's sat next to you, you can just lazily tilt your head because the seats have already put you in the right place. Just because Rolls-Royce has added a few more customer-driven innovations to the inside doesn't mean they've neglected any of the traditional luxury tropes. So behind here there is obviously a champagne cooler and a couple of flutes and these screens emerge from the backs of the seats and there are these funny little footrests which go up and down for, for no obvious reason. And of course the best thing about a Rolls-Royce remains which is that incredible view right the way through the cabin to the spirit of ecstasy on the bonnet, which you can now enjoy your art from. The new Phantom uses a 6.75 litre V12, which is obviously huge. It's also got two turbochargers for the first time, which makes it even faster. But it's not really been tuned for speed, it's much more about smoothness and comfort. Now back in the 60s, Rolls-Royce used to say that you could balance a coin on its thinnest edge on the running engine. That denoted that it truly was a Rolls-Royce. Now, I've got a quid here. I'll see if we can do it on this. It 
So the difficult second album, has Rolls-Royce pulled it off? Well, I think, yes, it looks enormous and imperious and grand and berserk and slightly silly, which is everything that a Rolls-Royce should be. But it's also just a little bit sleeker, it's a little bit more stylish, a bit more rakish, and it's kind of taken some of the energy and charisma that that model back in 2003 gave it and moved it on a notch, which is really cool to see. And also, this is just the beginning for this car, because you don't walk into a dealership and say, give me the red one. You specify the most ridiculous things. One customer has asked for a thousand diamonds to be crushed into the paint. Another one's asked for their own tartan. Another one's asked for an egg-shaped, cool capsule that fits in the back of their car to hold champagne. This is just the beginning, and I think with this new gallery element where you can stuff art into your car, it's completely changed what a car can be and also what a car can cost.